Welcome to the Welsh Woodman Workshop and in tonight's video I'm going to be talking through how to get the perfect sort of setup for your wood turning. Now this video has been very much requested by my subscribers so a few of you have contacted me and asked me specifically if I would do a video on this so I thought I'd make one just for you and hopefully that'll help you out. So we're going to be breaking down this video into eight really simple steps. So we're going to look at lathe placement, we're going to look at how to place your tools and pieces of equipment efficiently, sharpening, sanding, finishing, uh, the cleanup and some dust extraction as well. So we'll break those down into smaller steps, talk through how we can really improve some of the layout features in order to help you work more efficiently. So in terms of lathe positioning then, ideally you want to place your lathe on a nice flat level floor. That way as you're turning the lathe isn't gonna, gonna rock and if you've got like a, a flat concrete floor it's often a good idea to put some through bolts in to attach the base of the lathe securely to the floor. And that's gonna really sort of dampen that vibration then. Often you can put some rubber packers underneath and that tends to help as well. In terms of positioning your lathe, ideally you want to have full and free access with the tools around. So I remember when I first, my first lathe in my garden shed, I would try and turn the inside of a bowl and I'd be knocking the edge of the, the tool handle on the uh, the shed wall. So it's something to, to consider as well before you move it directly into place. Last thing with the lathe then, ideally you're gonna to want to make sure that you can access all around the lathe for maintenance. So if you've got areas where you need to open hatches up to grease the uh, the bearings and things like that, just make sure you can get access to those points and it's just gonna make your life far easier and make your lathes last longer. So your sharpening system, so grinder or belt or whatever you're using should be ideally as close to the lathe as possible within, within feet. So you step away from the lathe and you're directly at the sharpening. So that's gonna improve your time that you're away from the lathe and it's also going to sort of improve your efficiency. So from personal experience, however this close to the lathe, I'd be more motivated to go and sharpen when my tools are getting till. Whereas if it was across the workshop, uh, in the, like it was in the past, I'd be less motivated to sharpen. I'd carry on with tools that were far too blunt really for turning. So having it closer will really encourage you to use it more, I've found. And when you come to position your grinder, you just need to make sure you've got full and free movement. So things like your headstocks and things aren't going to get in the way when you come to the doing the grinding process. And just make sure you've got enough space behind the grinder to extend any jigs you may have as well as in front to use those jigs correctly. So installing your tools and accessories, ideally you want them to be within arm's reach. You, no way you need all these tools, these are just things I've collected and inherited over time. But having everything within uh, arm's reach of the, the lathe just makes a really quick transition if you needed to change over tools at all. Now it's definitely worth the time in investing in some form of tool holders rather than resting your tools on the lathe. So this is a Robert Sorbet roughing gouge. Rested it on the lathe, vibrated loose, went on the floor and it snaps pretty much at the critical point. So I've wasted a very expensive tool because I didn't have a holder. I learned my lesson from that and I, I built these holders. So if you save yourself some money and hassle, it's worth just coming up with some form of system in order to help you keep the tools nice and secure and safe. If you've got young children around, obviously these are up off the wall out of reach and they've got sharp points at the top. I'm just aware of those as I pick them out. Some people store them upside down as well, I know, but I just find this is easier for me as you can see what tool you're selecting straight away. Now by having a place for all tools, will keep your workshop nice and tidy. It'll also be really quick and easy to, to find things, which will speed up your, your wood turning as well. The, all I've done to create these tool holders, there are a PVC pipe, I've got a screw in the, the top and the bottom, which lets any shavings that might get into these just fall through the bottom, and it holds the tools nice and securely. Another point to mention as well, as I got them directly in front of me, I'm reaching over the lathe. I normally turn the lathe off before gathering my tools as that's a far safer process to do it. I'm just careful with my hands when I put them back. So again, with the accessories, it's always worth having a place for everything to make it really easy to grab. You notice a lot of these surfaces are, are sloped as well, so it's easier to brush the, the sawdust off or blow it off with the compressor. So by having a place for everything, it really speeds things up so I can put it back. I know if that's gone, something's missing. 
and it's just easier to find things time and time again and it helps keep the workshop nice and clean and tidy. I'm very much a tool spreader so if I've got a place where I can put the tools back it helps keep the workshop nice and tidy and far more efficient for me to carry out my job rather than hunting for a tool half an hour and to find it's right in front of my eyes to begin with. So things I use on a, a regular basis I'll have sort of a slot for and I, I like things to be out nice and visual uh, as, as drawers I often find things get lost in so I've got as many things as I can uh, on display almost so I can grab them quickly and move on for my next steps of turning. So in order to sort of keep all loads of sanding materials I've got drawers full of uh, a sandpaper there that are really easy to access close to the lathe, literally within arm's reach, so things I don't use on a, a regular basis throughout the way, wood shavings aren't going to get all over them, and I'm using some dead space under the lathe, it also makes the sweeping up process a lot easier, as I can sweep it up off the top, rather than trying to get right to the back of the lathe and, uh, and around it. I use these sort of air tools, so it's an air sander, so it oscillates, and it really speeds up the sanding process, so I've got all of these little sanding disc then stored in the in the drawer as well out of the way ready to use. In terms of my finishes then again they're all within a an arm's reach I've got some paper towel up there as well that I tend to add the, the finishes on I've also got the the flammable finishes I always store them especially overnight if I'm not using them in a fireproof cabinet out of the way so it's nice and safe and the finishing rags then go straight on the fire to, to, to reduce that fire hazard by having it again nice and close to the lathe and all the materials you need to apply the finish it's going to really help improve that efficiency and your, your workflow so rather than walking across the shop to grab a finish then coming back everything's all stored in one place and it's easy to get to and use so as soon as your project's complete you're going to have to clean up which is probably one of the most important steps and you're going to want to position your tools and your machinery that you've got access to sweep all around them uh, if possible and you can minimise um, sort of the shavings and things getting into different places by putting up a, a plastic curtain or in, in this case I've, I've got down here some uh, lovely Welsh flags to, to stop it from going underneath my, my cabinets there and by having things like that in your workshop will really sort of reduce the time it takes you to, to clean up so if you can isolate it in one area that's really going to help out so dust extraction you're going to want something that you can suck up those really fine dust particles especially when you're sanding so some of the tropical hardwoods that you can use something like a uh, aroco can be or i choke as i like to call it can be quite carcinogenic over a long exposure period so cancer causing so you're going to need some form of extraction to suck that dust up to stop it from going into your lungs now with my extractor I've got a, a wall mounted one and I found, it, I found that by mounting it higher on the wall where it's at eye level where I can see the bag it motivates me far more to empty that bag then and keep the machine far more efficient so it's easy to take down and sort of clean out the filters and such but it's definitely worth having some form of extraction when you come to doing your turning so something you don't often see on the videos I've got this portable extractor and I've created a little jig so I can adjust this little hose where it needs to be so as I'm sanding uh, my things I've got negative pressure behind the the workpiece which would suck all that fine dust up then uh, into this and it being portable I can move this from machine to machine which makes it nice and handy for me so even with a dust extractor you're still going to get long shavings and tiny piece of dust maybe that it doesn't completely catch so it's a good idea to have some form of air filtration system so it filters out the, the air in the room this is really good you can leave it on for a couple of hours after you leave the, the workshop and it continues to filter out that air so it's far nicer then for the, the next day's worth of turning so on the same lines as sort of extraction and sort of personal protective equipment I use a power respirator. Now I get a lot of questions on this so I thought I'd cover it again uh, in this video. So the brand is a GSP Power Active IP so impact re resistant visor on it and this has been superb uh, in sort of filtering out the dust before it gets to my lungs especially in turning those tropical hardwoods along with the extractors and the air filtration system. So I got this at the tool post a good few years ago and it's been a, a really good uh, purchase. 
when I blow my nose now I can't tell what species of wood I've been turning for the day so uh, it's worth having for sure. Now another factor that often gets overlooked is lighting. So ideally you want a nice bright natural light. I've got these little LED strobe lights in here which help really illuminate the, the place and you're going to want good lighting as that will really help you see what sort of finish you're getting on your pieces and the lighting can sometimes cast a shadow on any of those tool marks so it should help you in theory to get a, a nicer finish overall. Now focus lighting can be done really cheaply it doesn't need to be really fa fancy and high tech this is just a, a desk lamp one of these spring desk lamps from Ikea and it does the job really well of illuminating the piece that I'm working on and you can also get you see I've got quite a few of these around the the workshop so you can focus light exactly where you need it and that helps so I've got one on my sharpening station and another IKEA lamp so it's all done on the cheap is this one here with a gooseneck on it and this is really good for looking inside hollow forms and things like that which are quite difficult normally to, to see inside, so LEDs again. So essentially, if you can see the piece better, you're going to get a better piece overall, in theory. So I hope tonight's video has been really helpful for you in some way. Uh, those are just my own sort of personal views and tips, but I hope they can help you out. Now, if you have been turning for a long time and you'd like to comment in the comments below any of your own sort of shop organising tips or tips to help improve wood turning efficiency, I'd be really grateful if you could put those in the comments. I've also been asked by a lot of my subscribers to do a sort of question and answer session uh, all about wood turning and my, my sort of background and things like that. So if you've got any questions about that, please feel free to leave those in the comments and I'll try and make a future video then uh, covering those questions and answering them for you. If you haven't done so already, please check out my other videos on my channel and subscribe if you like tonight's video as that allows me to get more content like this your way. So I hope you have a great night. Dialchum Vaur, no stuff.